guys, it's Glenn from glenncarcollection.com and today we're going to talk about one of my favorite cars, a 2013 E92 M3 in frozen blue. Alright, so this car just sold on Bring a Trailer, so let me give you background on this car. This is like the Holy Grail, or one of the Holy Grail of E92 M3s, probably this in the Lime Rock Edition for me. This comes with a six-speed manual. It has a carbon fiber roof, no sunroof. It does have navigation. Now this car was sold in 2017 when it had, I think, 5,200 miles on Bring a Trailer and it sold for a then high price of 65,000. Keep in mind on Bring a Trailer, you pay a 5% commission when you buy a car. So the owner paid about 68,000, somewhere in that range, 68,400. Now that same owner has had a little bit more miles. It's got like 7,500 miles or 74 and change and selling it now four years later. So let's see what the price went up to. So let me give you some more about the car. The car has a black interior, frozen blue metallic paint, which believe it or not, the frozen blue edition was a $15,000 option. So the original sticker with premium package, cold weather package, and it's a competition package car was $80,000. 15,000 of that, and there's the carbon fiber roof, was the frozen blue edition. Now, of course, this car bringing all the money, I think even a DCT would bring all the money, but this is a true six-speed manual, so a three pedal car. Stunning with the black competition wheels. And to me, this is the holy grail of M cars, or the holy grail certainly of E92. So of course this is gonna sell for big money, which we'll get to at the end of the video. So what makes the E92 M3 so great? Before I had a YouTube channel, I had an E90 M3. So I had it in uh, Interlagos Blue in 08, which was the first year. Six speed manual slick top. So I did not, I bought the car new actually. So I did not go for the sunroof. I had the 18 inch wheels. I had the six speed manual. There was no competition package available in that first year, 2008. I had the cold weather package for sure. I'm pretty sure I had the premium package, slick top, no sunroof, no navigation. So I didn't have the enhanced radio sound that this car had because the premium stereo was only available if you had the navigation package. So if you see in the doors, you see those speakers there. So the radio on my car was awful, <laughs> but I didn't buy it for that. This was a car since I had the four doors. That was my real estate car. I eventually, over the six years I had it, had two kids in baby seats and uh, I would track it on the weekends. And I had that car, I bought it new, I had that car for six years. And the reason I had that car for so long was I couldn't find a better car that can do anything. During my ownership of that car, or actually, uh, yeah, during my owner, no, I already had a 911. So when I bought that car, I had uh, my 996 C4S, which was an 02 model that I bought used in 2006. So I already had a 911, which is the one car that did everything. But really, the uh, E90 did everything because of the four doors. And even in, I drove it in the winter with uh, winter tires on it, never got stuck once. So it was a fantastic car. Now, Enthusiasts certainly like the two-door E92 M3. Basically, everything is essentially the same, except for the doors and a couple other minor things. And I just think this is a stunning, stunning car. So I always like the Interlagos Blue or the Le Mans Blue in this car. I always think black interior looks the best. My E46 M3s had black interior. Though I did have the bamboo beige interior on my E90 with the Interlagos Blue, I kind of like the contrast, but black is an excellent choice. And I think for collectability, black is the better choice, to be honest. So what's so great about these cars? Well, the reason you buy this car, because it is heavier than the E46 M3. So the E46 M3 is very nimble. It works really well with that S54 engine, that inline, naturally aspirated six cylinder. But what this car has is a four liter naturally aspirated V8 that revs to about almost 8,500 RPM, if I remember correctly, 82, somewhere in that range. And the fun of this car is revving out. There's really not much power below 5,000. Here's the original window sticker that shows the $15,000 frozen blue option plus an $80,000 MSRP. So with this engine, the fun really starts when you hit 5,000 RPM. So it's, it's basically, I don't wanna say regular three series, but it's not that quick of a car from uh, 5,000 RPM or under, but when you hit 5,000 RPM, I remember when I got this car, it was, just as fast as everything on the road. Motor Week got a zero to 60, zero to 60 time of 4.3 seconds, a quarter mile time, I believe, of 12.7. And that is, you know, they don't correct for temperature or anything like that. You know, car and driver probably got 
4.0 or 3.9 could they correct for altitude and temperature, which Motor Week does not. So I think the Motor Week is more of a realistic uh, 0 to 60. But the fun really starts when this car hits 5,000 RPM. And I remember as an owner of this car, when I accelerated from 5,000, it got up to 8,000 real quick. Now here's a shot of the navigation. I did not have navigation, so I had the regular uh, center dash without the big hump there. This car looks great at every angle, whether it's an E90 or E92 M3. I think this car still looks good today. And this is the gauges I like, analog gauges. And here you can see that red line. Now this has the movable red line as well. When you start the car, I think it's at like 5,000 when the engine's cold. And as it warms up, the red line will eventually go to that, uh, to over 8,000. Now this car, as you see, has under 7,500 miles. And these are probably my favorite gauges that I ever had in any M car. I would say these gauges or the E46 M3, my 1 Series M, I wish, honestly, they'd go back to the uh, the old gauges. I don't like the gauges in the new M3. I don't like the gauges in my M340i X-Drive. Good choice there with the carbon fiber uh, dash. And the most important in the, this car, which I think makes it a lot of fun and obviously holds the value, is the six-speed manual. All right, so what did this car sell for? Well, this car sold for just over 84000 Now, we have to add the 5% buyer's premium, and this car was about 88400 somewhere in that range. Now, remember, assuming, you know, you're going to have to ship it to where, you know, wherever the new buyer lives, and you're going to have to pay sales tax, you're going to be into this car probably ninety to 95000 Well, go up from there. Well, if there's a car to go up, it would be this as a manual, the Frozen Blue Edition, or the Lime Rock Edition in the manual. Here you can see the uh, the three pedals. So definitely has a good chance of going up. You had to pay through the nose to get one. But hey, you have one of these few cars that were made in this frozen blue. Last year, the car, which was 2019 here in the United States, the model years were 2008 to 2013. So you have the best version of it. So I am so jealous and enjoy your car. Thanks for watching, guys. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you next time.